I'm going to show how to surface a turbine housing flat on the milling machine with a milling program. Very easy to write, so I'll show you how to do the that. Tool, originally, I want the tool to move from here to here. You could do it any way that you want. You could do it here to here. You could do it diagonally if you wanted to on either side that way. So basically, I took this tool. I moved it manually to right here where I wanted it, where it wasn't going to touch, start cutting. And that's where I'm going to begin the program. So I did zero, zero on that. I then manually moved the tool over here. Then I recorded that value. So that will be entered into my program. So the beginning information will be start point zero, zero here. It'll be zero, zero, meaning X is zero and Y is zero. So this is what our program looks like, our beginning. So we're going to start at zero, zero, which I made that point right here. I'll also show you how to, to zero it out. When you're in digital readout, it's as simple as pressing X and then set Y, set. If you want to set Z, then you do the same thing. The X end and Y end is basically where, where the tool is traveling to. Y, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going straight across on X, and that's going to be over to this point. So I move the tool manually here. Then I recorded the value in the DRO, digital readout, and then just manually entered, entered it there. The tool offset, I want that to be center. Uh, basically, the way the tool offset is, would you want it to be right of this part, left of this, basically the center that you put right of that, left of this, or directly through the center of your zero point. So that's why I put center feed rate. I chose 10, but I'm gonna use overrides on that. So that may be too high. Tool number one, and I put no to continue. If you don't know where you're going on this, always press back. The next thing I wanna do is just go back to my tool setup, tool table. And then I entered six inches for my diameter of tool one because this is a six inch diameter. And I go back to our DRO. This is where you enter information. So if you want to take, take this tool, bottom it here, and then set your zero point for Z. So you would do zero set. I've already done that, so it's already entered. Why? The reason why that's still zero is because I never moved it in this direction. I only moved it in the X direction. And then, you know, basically what I was explaining before is that this is the point I'm traveling to from my original zero, which is here to here. So if I wanted to zero this out right here, I would press X, set, Y, set. But if I did that, then the program would start right here and run that direction. So all these numbers would change. It would run that direction until it gets to this value from here, because that would be our new zero point if we did that. So if I wanted to run it from here, I'll just go ahead and lift the tool up, make it safe. I'll go to mode, run, start, and then you start pressing the go buttons up here. Don't start pressing buttons if you don't know what you're doing. So read the screen. Now it's saying to load the spindle or load the tool and start the spindle and then press go for the for it to run. I always turn my override down right here because it's going to wrap it over to position. So if you're not careful, it could hit something or hurt you if it runs in your direction. So now you can turn up the override. You know it's going exactly where you expected it to go. So it's going to go here. This is where it's telling me to set my Z position. I'll bring it down to zero. Just do a pass over top of it just to make sure that it's going to be right. And uh, actually, if you're doing a trial run, have it run a little bit above it just so you can see where it's going to go. Then the next pass, just do just zero just in case you're off on your your zeroing of this part uh, we've got our proper inserts in these are for stainless steel or cast iron material and we're going to set our spindle speeds we're in low gear this is low and high we're going to go up here see what our rpm is i'll probably change that i may go 400 
uh, look up and see what you want your speeds to be. There's different speed and feed calculators. I'll probably just I'll research that real fast. Here's how you turn your spindle on, but I can't really do that until I turn the three-phase converter on. So I gotta turn this on. Now I'm gonna turn my spindle on. Wrong way. Let's uh, hit, hit the go button. And it's traveling. So all it's doing is just moving in that direction. It's moving the table. Well, it's moving the table this way. So the spindle is, stays fixed. And it's just gonna surface right over the part. So let's do it for real. So we're in the middle of this program. We wanna go back to the beginning. So we're gonna press stop. Go ahead and turn our spindle off. It's, it's asking to press go to continue where you are, but we're gonna restart this. So we're gonna to go to mode, run, start, and it's basically everything from the beginning. Let's turn our override down. We don't want it to wrap it over so fast. Okay, now we can set our Z. Our Z is this axis here, so we just bring it on down. All right, I put it at a comfortable value. I'll just have it go, and I'll make sure I put in my overrides very slowly, and I'll make this pass. Looking really good. Here is where I'm going to stop it. So I just stopped it right there because otherwise the back half is going to cut it again. And I don't know that I really want to do that. I'm going to see where it's at, take it off, not take the part off, lift the machine up, start from zero again. All right, so this is the result I have. You can see it's got a spot here, it didn't cut, here, and then this whole corner here. So when I took the edge finder, I bottomed here, 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 here and there when I got from here to here it was even here to here it was even so basically zero 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 and then for some reason this square I couldn't get right from what I could tell it looked like it was low here low there low there and low there before well actually it wasn't really that low in that area but you can tell it a little bit there where it didn't cut so from from what I was noticing with this, it seemed like when it was warped in the centers, like the bolts when where they mounted, they may have been even or so, possibly. Besides, you know, I couldn't get it exactly right. I just did the best I could. I'm gonna go ahead and just deck it because I put a straight edge on this and it showed it showed touching here, but then it it basically had like gaps here and here and every corner I did. So that's why I want to just go ahead and just deck it completely flat, start over. You can see we're getting much closer now. I put in for two and a half thousandths more off so you can see what it's cutting. That finish looks beautiful. Would you look at that? Just look at it. All right, let's go two and a half more. Again, I went to mode. Let's start from the beginning. Mode, run, start begin. All right, press go. Now it's asking to ro load the tool, turn the spindle on. And we gotta set our spindle down.
Fast cutting. So just a little area right there. It's looking good. Really good. Got the two thousands off this mass. Hopefully I'll clean it up and finish off. If you want one of these trimming tools, I'll link to that in the description box. I use these on a daily basis. This one I don't really like as much as the other one, but it was only like ten dollars, so it works pretty good anyway. The other one where you can or use the tool at different angles and stuff, so that's why I don't like it as much. But this one does, I mean, it does the job. It only does certain cuts. That's why it's not as good as the other one I have. But I definitely like having both because this one has a bigger blade on it. And it's really hard to cut that with the other one I have.